Hi, this is Ken Poindexter. Today on eMarketWiz TV, we're going to be building a new video editing computer. Thanks for joining me. I am very excited about today's show because we're going to be building my new video editing computer. The computer I'm currently using is about three years old. It's an old i7-860. It was a great machine at the time, but it's getting a little dated. So it was time for me to, you know, either buy a new machine or, as we're going to do here today, build a machine. Now, I started doing a lot of research on the web when I uh, realized I needed a new computer, started to have some problems with the other one. And uh, I saw that, you know, it looked like it wasn't that complicated to actually build a computer, even though it seems like a pretty daunting task. So I thought that it would be great if you could come along with me as we build this computer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you uh, a little bit of information about each one of the components that are going to go into the system. I'm going to tell you why I selected it. And, you know, a lot of that for us had to do with the fact that we do video production, video editing, 3D animation, and motion graphics for our business clients. So this is a pretty robust machine. But whether you're building a machine that is powerful like this one is for video editing, or you just need a home computer, or maybe something not quite as powerful for your business, or maybe something even more powerful than this, then today I think you're going to learn a lot about the process of building a computer. So why don't we get started? Here we have the CPU and the motherboard. The CPU I've selected for this build is the Intel Core i7-4820K. Now this is a brand new processor, it's only been out about a month, and it's one of three processors that comprise Intel's new Ivy Bridge E-Series. Now this is their enthusiast series of processors that are designed to go in workstations and more powerful computers. This particular chip operates at 3.7 gigahertz, but it can be overclocked and it has a 10 megabyte cache. It's designed to work with motherboards that have the LGA 2011 socket and the X79 chipset. Now this is not a new chipset, it's about three years old. But ASUS has come out with a brand new board, the X79 Deluxe, and it has this chipset with a lot of updates. It has eight serial ATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Now these are twice as fast as, as the old serial ATA ports. These, this is where we connect our optical drive, our solid state drive, and our mechanical hard drives to the motherboard. That's going to give us increased performance. Also, there are many USB 3.0 ports. These are 10 times faster than the old USB 2.0 ports. Again, increased performance. Also, we have several PCIe 3.0 uh, graphics card slots, so we can have multiple graphics cards in this computer, and in conjunction with the 40 PCI Express lanes that are on the CPU, we can move a lot of information quickly between the CPU and the graphics cards. This board also comes with uh, the latest Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. So we have the Intel Core i7-4820K CPU and the Asus X79 Deluxe motherboard. Our Intel 4820K uh, i7 chip puts off a lot of heat, so it needs to be cooled. There are basically two types of cooling systems that seem to do an effective job. Uh, one's a water-based system where it's actually an enclosed system. It has a pump. It has water inside of it. It goes inside of the computer case. It attaches to the CPU, and it does a, an effective job of keeping the CPU cool. But having water around electronics just didn't sit well with me. The very best solution that I could find that was air-cooled is this Noctua NHU14S. This looks like a big radiator. It has a fan on one side. This is in a push configuration. And I bought a second fan so that when it's installed, it will be in a push-pull configuration. Now, you don't need to worry about what that is. You'll see firsthand uh, how it works when we install it into the computer. Uh, this is a great unit. It's going to do a fantastic job of keeping our CPU cool and operating the way we need it to. Two of the most important components in any computer build are the power supply and the graphics card. I selected the Corsair AX860 Platinum Series power supply that is a modular power supply produced by Seasonic for Corsair, and they produce some of the best power supplies that are made. This power supply is going to give us plenty of power for all of the components that we're using in our computer build. One of my favorite components of this entire computer build is the graphics card. It's the Asus GeForce GTX 670 Direct CU2 graphics card. It's a dual fan cooled graphics card that's extremely powerful and based on the NVIDIA chipset. Now that's important to me because my company uses the Adobe suite of products. And Adobe Premiere Pro that we use for video editing and After Effects for motion graphics both utilize the CUDA cores in the NVIDIA chipset which will provide faster render times 
for the online videos and motion graphics that we produce for our clients. Here are all the storage components for the computer. I'm going to install 32 gigabytes of random access memory, also a Kingston HyperX 120 gigabyte solid state drive. I'm going to put the operating system on this very fast drive and that will allow the computer to boot up in just a few seconds. I'm also going to install two of Western Digital's top of the line black caviar hard disk drives. Each of these will hold two terabytes for a total of four terabytes. And all of this together is going to give us the kind of capacity we need. So to house all those components, I selected the Corsair 500R case. As you can see, it's a big case, but we need it because there's going to be a lot of components inside of this. Uh, it also has a lot of ventilation. It has uh, two 120 millimeter fans on the front. It has a 200 millimeter fan on the side, and it has another 120 millimeter fan in the rear. And again, that's going to be it's going to provide the kind of ventilation we need for all of those uh, components that we have operating on the inside. Why don't we take a look at the inside. As you can see, it, you can put a lot of stuff in here. Here's where the motherboard goes. Here's where the power supply goes. We have uh, four five and a quarter inch bays here. I've already populated one of those with the optical drive from my old computer. We also have six additional bays here or trays that will hold uh, three and a half inch devices and two and a half inch devices. Now you'll see uh, how we uh, install those as we build the computer and uh, uh, you're going to see a lot more of this case throughout the build. Uh, on the front of the case you see it has a power button, there's some USB 3.0 ports, it has a firewire port, it has audio connections for headphones and a microphone, it has a uh, three-way switch to control the speed of the fans, there's a button that even controls the lights on these fans. Three of the four fans have LED lights and so we can turn those LEDs on or off. And there's also a power reset button. So uh, I really like this case. I got it in white. I thought it would look a little different, a little cool, and uh, I hope you think so too. And like I said before, we're gonna see a lot more of this throughout the build. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the CPU onto the motherboard. Now, in the instructions it says, we're not supposed to touch the top of this CPU. And I think that might be kind of difficult to do. We're gonna do our best. But uh, anyway, so let's uh, give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. Just to get these two armatures up. This one's kind of giving me a hard time. There we go. I'm gonna move this back. Now there's a little triangle in the upper right hand corner of the CPU and that's supposed to line up uh, in the upper right hand corner of, the, of this uh, socket. So let's see how this is gonna work. Okay, let's try this from a different way. Okay, there it is. Okay, so it says now, push this one down first. connected. This is not for the people who don't have manual dexterity, which I'm one of those people. Hmm. So it's got to grab the front here. Okay. You just make sure that's seated in there properly still. Again. Yep, looks good.
Okay, a lot of people say this is difficult. So there it is, we've successfully installed our CPU. The next thing that we're gonna do is install the CPU cooler, the Noctua NHU14S. As you can see, it does look like a big radiator and it came with one fan attached. I'm gonna attach another fan uh, you know, before we install it into the computer in a push-pull configuration. And, uh, but right now, we're gonna take off uh, the fan that came on the unit so that we will uh, have a little easier time installing this onto the motherboard. So let's take that off. And it comes off pretty easily. All right. The, uh, so now this is just about ready to install, but what first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the mounting hardware onto the motherboard. Came with this nifty little pack here. And on the Asus X79 Deluxe, it already comes with a metal back plate installed so that we don't have to put the one that came with the CPU cooler onto the board. We're just installing the four standoffs. And we just want to tighten these up by hand. Motherboard has a lot of mi microscopic traces running throughout the motherboard, and we don't want to damage any of those. All right, the next thing we're going to do is uh, put on the brackets. Okay, we're gonna use these nuts, knurled nuts. And again, we're just gonna tighten these hand tight. Whoops. Hmm. I'll drop one. All right. Our last one goes off. Make sure these are hand tight. Okay, now we're gonna put a little thermal paste. Again, about the size of a pea. Right. Now what we want to do is remove the protective cover off of the bottom and we want to seat this down onto the CPU. Make sure it's flat. Wind up with these screws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, that's going to line everything up perfectly. And again, just hand tight. Let's set this down. Top of the CPU. And we want to screw these. Tighten the screws until they stop. Okay. Okay. 
here we go. All right. Now we're going to install the fans. our arrows are going in the right direction. And there we have our fans installed. So there we have it. The Noctua CPU cooler is installed. Now we're going to install 32 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I actually had 16 gigabytes already in the old computer and I just went out and bought 16 uh, additional gigabytes uh, so that we could populate all eight memory slots on the motherboard. So it's pretty simple. You just line it up with the slots and you push straight down. Really clicks. This goes this way. All right, there we have the 32 gigabytes of DDR3 random access memory installed onto the motherboard. So before we put the motherboard into the computer, we, we need to install the plate that goes onto the back of the computer. Now we do this as we kind of do uh, one side, and we just press the rest of it in. And that goes in like so. Check the alignment. Looks like everything lines up nicely. And we'll start screwing in from the corners. We don't want to apply much pressure at all when we're installing the motherboard because, again, we don't want to damage any of those traces. Okay, we've got the four corners in to this intersection.
And there we have the motherboard installed. Okay, it's time to install the power supply into the computer case. Uh, this is the Corsair AX860, it came in a fancy bag. Uh, the cables that, the power cables that go uh, along with the power supply also came in a very nice bag as you see here. Uh, this is a modular power supply, so you see it has connections here on the front. And uh, instead of having a great big uh, harness of cables that comes out of the front of this, we can uh, install only the power cables that we need based on the components that we have installed in this computer. So we're going to go ahead and get this wired up. It's a little bit easier to do beforehand before we put it into the uh, computer case. And so we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we've installed our power supply. We, we attached all the cables to it. We've uh, routed most of the cables around back of the case through the rubber grommets uh, into the general area where they're gonna be connected. I went ahead and I installed the uh, uh, solid state drive onto a tray. Uh, that had to be screwed in on our uh, two two terabyte Western Digital Black Caviar drives. These are just uh, plastic trays and they have pins that go where the uh, screws would go. On the, uh, on the drives and uh, they just snap in very, very nicely. So we're now gonna put the drives into the co computer case and we're going to then come around back and we're gonna begin to connect the data cables and the power cables and then we're gonna come back to the front of the case. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the cables and connections inside the main case. In the upper right hand side of the case, you're gonna notice that we have the optical drive which has a data cable and a power cable attached. At the top of the motherboard, we have our two power connections for the fans on the CPU cooler. This 24-pin connector here provides power to the motherboard. This cable is the USB 3.0 uh, connection to the motherboard from the ports on the front of the computer. Here we have our serial ATA data connections coming into the motherboard from our optical drive, our solid state drive, and both of our mechanical hard drives. At the bottom of the motherboard here we have a Q connector and plugged into it are the controls for the reset switch, the power switch, the hard drive LED and a couple of other LEDs. Over here we have the HD audio connections that runs to the headphone jack and microphone jack on the front of the computer. Here we have our power connector for our rear fan and up here at the top of the motherboard this is the power cable for the CPU. Well that pretty much covers all of our cables and connections up to this point for the computer. Well, all right, there's only one thing left to do before we can turn on the computer and see if everything works, and that's to install our graphics card, the ASUS GeForce GTX 670. Well, okay, we've installed our graphics card, we've hooked power up to the computer, we've hooked the monitor up to it, now it's time to turn on the computer and see what happens. All right, I remembered I needed to install a keyboard and a mouse, my monitor is on, let's press the power button and see what happens. Okay, some lights are coming on. Fans are working. All right, Asus, that's encouraging. So far, so good. All right. We're up and we're on. Well, it took about six hours to build this computer. Uh, I'm glad I did it. I'm now looking forward to installing and setting up our software that we use in our business and beginning to put this thing to use. I'm so glad that you could come along with me on this journey. I hope that you found it beneficial. If you did, I hope you'll press the like button and also hope that you'll share this video and subscribe to our channel. We put new videos up here regularly. You know, so I'd like to leave you with some words of wisdom that I borrowed from an old farmer. Live simply, love generously, speak kindly, care deeply, and leave the rest to God. Thanks for joining me.